We are about to see a very, very important play, um, a play that um, Marilyn was asking me how many times this play. I remember four productions of this play in my theater going lifetime in Toronto, lifetime in Toronto. So this is not a play that isn't done very often. This is a play that is so important that it is done very often. This is a seminal piece of Canadian writing. It's also a seminal piece of Quebecois writing, uh, and I make that distinction because Tremblay himself does. It is also a seminal piece of queer writing. It was written in 1973 uh, in Montreal, where, uh, where Michel Tremblay grew up, um, a working class lad. Uh, he grew up in what was known as, or some people refer to as, La Grande Noirceur, the Great Darkness, the year of the conservative premier Duplessis, and his, what shall we say, partnership with the Roman Catholic Church. The Quiet Revolution that was ushered in in 1960, um, Jean Lesage, and then follow, uh, followed by, in 1960, followed by Robert uh, Bourassa in 1970, um, these governments brought in what is known as the Quiet Revolution, the Quiet Revolution which essentially took, uh, changed the power dynamic in Quebec from what was essentially, for a working class Quebecer, imagine this, which is essentially you're ruled by the church and the English elite. And Michel Tremblay comes into his maturity as a man and a maturity as a writer just at a time when the nation of Quebec is um, discovering its identity. And it's discovering its identity as the veils are pulled apart, pulled off by the Quiet Revolution. In 1968, he writes his first play. It becomes a, an explosion. You've often heard me when I contextualize plays like John Osborne's um, Look Back in Anger as an explosion or uh, Ibsen's Doll's House as an explosion, a moment when uh, in the dramaturgical history of these things, things after which after something happens, everybody has to respond to it. You either accept it or you reject it, but you cannot ignore it. Michel Tremblay's Les Berceurs in 1968 is one of those pieces. It introduces the, the linguistic element of Joual into the artistic conversation in Quebec and says that the language of the working class Quebecois it can be the language of great art. And this is huge and it comes it comes hand in hand with the political shifts that are happening. And Michel Tremblay becomes one of a generation of, of Quebecois artists that allow Quebecers to believe that they actually can stand on their own two feet, um, or their own many, many feet. Uh, 1976, of course, is going to be the first separatist government, René Lévesque's Parti Québécois is going to come in in 1976, but directly as a result of the Quiet Revolution. This is the context in which this play is written. Um, at the same time, we have to look at the context, I think, of the dramatist's understanding of where he comes from. And unfortunately, I don't have a great um, understanding of Quebecois literature in general, certainly not of Quebec, uh, Quebec writers prior to Michel Tremblay, um, uh, but uh, born in 1942, by the way, still alive and thriving in, in uh, Montreal as a novelist and a playwright. Uh, but what I do know is that theatrically at this moment, there, if I think of the two, sort of two iconic when I think of this play, Hosanna, I think of two iconic gay writers of the English theater, one of them uh, being Noel Coward, whose most famous play is Private Lives, and the other is an American um, who is writing at the same time and whose who's explos explosive play, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, um, hits the stage in 1963, just a couple of years before Tremblay writes his first play. I'm talking, of course, about the recently late Edward Albee, who all of us in the theater mourn um, because such an important voice. The play that you're going to see today is absolutely cognizant of the, the path blazed by Edward Albee 
and by Noel Coward. And in both of those plays, we can think of these incendiary arguments between a man and a woman. Elliot and Amanda in Private Lives, and, and uh, George and Virginia in Who's Afraid of, uh, George and Martha in, in, in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. And, and what's interesting is these gay men, Coward and Albee, in their time, wrote these relationships, drawing from their own experience, and write these relationships and give a male and a female protagonist. In Michel Tremblay's Hosanna, which is another reason I think it's so important, it's he does the same thing, but he does it with another layer of theatricality. And he gives us, if you will, Amanda and Elliot, or George and Martha, but he gives us it to them in the, the guise of Kiret and Hosanna. Kiret, Raymond, Hosanna, Claude, Raymond in his own drag, Hosanna in her drag. Hosanna's drag, Claude's drag, is the drag of Elizabeth Taylor in Cleopatra. Notice the connection to Edward Albee. Elizabeth Taylor in Cleopatra is how Hosanna dresses, Claude dresses up as Hosanna, as Elizabeth Taylor, as Cleopatra. Layers and layers and layers of masks. Claude, who's the macho, the, the butch, um, leather biker in the thing is also in his own disguise, in his, wearing his own mask. And then again, when we talk of masks, we talk about the Greek theater. And we must remind ourselves of Aristotle, Charlie. We must remind ourselves that what Michel Tremblay has given us is a play with, which has perfect Aristotelian unities of time, space, and action. One room, one day, one night, in fact, and one major action, this action being the revelation of one's identity. And I don't want to give too much away because it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful play that is very easy. There's nothing obscure about it. When you will experience, you will see exactly what I'm talking about. You will probably also understand why in the 1970s, when it was first produced in Quebec, the original director and the original production wanted to equate it to the identity of Quebec itself asserting its own selfhood. But now as we look back, as great art can do, in the 1970s, that's what it spoke to. In 2016, it speaks to something quite different. And it speaks to an argument or discussion, a conversation that is going on uh, consistently and sadly, an ongoing conversation that is going on throughout the world. And even in this country or in North America where we feel ourselves more democratic and more liberal and more tolerant, it's going on with alarming regularity and with alarming closeness. And this production was, was, um, was staged specifically because we chose to do it at the time we did it, specifically because of the bombings in Orlando. And this production is a response to that to say, um, we must get over this madness. I'm going to introduce our beloved Gregory Prest, who's gonna say a few things about the production. Gregory. Hello. Uh, thank you for coming, welcome. Um, one of my favorite memories of my grandmother was, uh, this would be, oh, this was before my time, uh, in 1962, 1963, uh, she was at home and she cooked a casserole for the family. And then my mom came home after school and said, Mom, what are we having? And she said, I made a casserole. And she said, Mom, really? And then my uncle came home and said, Mom, what are we having? And uh, my grandmother said, uh, I made a casserole for us tonight. And she said, oh, can we have something else? And then my grandfather got home and said, Stella, what are we having tonight? And my grandmother said, I made a casserole today. <laughs> and he said, oh, Stella, again. And she took one look at them, and she opened up the back door, and she took the whole casserole and just biffed it into the backyard <laughs> and said, to hell with all of you. And this, this, this story, this memory to me, is what connects me to what I feel, that's what I love about Tremblay, because his, his characters are so angry <laughs> and, and, and real and uh, troubled and, and express themselves in ridiculous, 
but totally understandable ways. It's so pathetic in such tragic ways, and yet are so, so human, because Tremblay was writing about his, his community. All his plays take place in Montreal. They're about his neighbors, about his mother, about his grandmother, about his aunts. They're all about the people around him and all their limitations, their failed dreams or their illusions of grandeur. And so there's a, there's a, there's a real sadness, yet it's hysterically funny. And that's sort of one of the things that I love about Tremblay because he's able to, uh, you know, if my grandmother was the queen of Carthage, she would have, you know, burned down cities, but instead she just got rid of a, got rid of a casserole dish. Um, uh, the play was written, uh, the first act was written a year before the second act. And it was written in Greece while he, while he was away, trying to figure out what it is to be Quebecois. To be, and, and he equated, you know, that the, the Quebecois, they, they, they needed to be transvestites in their own country because they weren't, they weren't given the permission to be people, so therefore they had to dream about something else that they weren't instead of being themselves. And it was originally called Hosanna et son en amont cuirette, which is roughly uh, Hosanna and his love cuirette. But he didn't know that the second half would be mostly Hosanna. So he wrote that uh, uh, a year later. Um, in our production, uh, one of the things, Yannick Larive was the designer, and we wanted to create this tiny, 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 tiny apartment. And we originally started with something that had, I don't know, like 12 square feet. But of course, with a theater, with sight lines, you had to expand it. So we tried to make the smallest thing possible because it takes place 3 o'clock in the morning, Halloween. It's a Halloween party. They come back from this Halloween party. And I don't know about you, I feel like I have progressed a bit as an adult, but those conversations that one has at two in the morning with your loved one, that now I can say, you know what? I just, I'd love to continue this conversation tomorrow. <laughs> but these characters do not have that because of the anger, because of the rage, because of what has been taken away from them. Uh, what they value, what they have is so little that they have to fight for it. Um, this has been a dream to do this. Uh, it's a, a surprise. Albert talked to me about this. It is, this is one of the best experiences I've ever had. Uh, Damien Atkins, who many you might have seen here, plays Ozana. Um, uh, and Jason Cadieu, who's a new actor to you. He's never been here before. He's wonderful. He plays Quiret. Uh, Damien, a few weeks ago, met Tremblay and asked a lot of questions. And Tremblay said, remember, you have to remember, now that you spoke to this, that both of them are in drag. Both of them are pretending to be something that they're not. And it's very important. And uh, apparently, um, uh, Jean Archambault, who was the original Ozana in 1972, 73, he was uh, Michel Tremblay's partner. And uh, he wrote it for him, but <laughs> as a breaking up gift. <laughs> so after seven years together, this you know, was a, a gift for him. So if you know the play, and when you're watching the play, it's very, very complicated. Um, uh, I hope you enjoy it. I don't think there's anything interesting I can tell you. Um, thanks for coming. We'll see you after. Thank you. you mentioned Mr. Ashambault and his, the premiere performance. It would be impertinent, impertinent of me not to mention that the, as I did at my table, that the original production of this play in English was at the Tarragon Theater in 1974. And the performance of Hosanna at that time um, by a Canadian actor whose name I will tell you if you don't, not know, don't know in a minute, is, is as seminal to Canadian theater as um, the performance, the, the incendiary performance of Marlon Brando as Stanley Kowalski in Tennessee Williams' Streetcar Named Desire in 1948. The performance I'm talking about was by someone who, who, whose whole, I believe, whose whole way of dealing with the world himself, ever after, was completely influenced by his playing of Hosanna. And he went on to do many, many wonderful things, including running the Stratford Festival for years and years. But he had, he brought with him this huge triumph, I think throughout his life, this huge triumph that he had at the Tarragon. I'm talking about the late Richard Manette. Uh, and Richard Manette's performance of Hosanna, which I was too young to see, 
don't get, but, but many, anyone who saw it, it is, it is seared in the, and it's only now, this 40 odd years later, that an actor like Damian Atkins can walk out there and give you a Hosanna that is entirely his without the, because enough time has gone by. But for a long time, it was terrifying to perform. I performed Hosanna at, with Bill Webster as Kiret in 1989, and, and Richard Manette came to see it. I, I, I mourn the fact that Richard's not with us, but for Damien, I'm very glad he's not here tonight. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Enjoy the performance.